today's show. It looks like Harold has gas pains. Bill gets his axe together, and I'm going to show you how to make a boat trailer out of a couple of stolen bicycles. And now let's hear it for the host with the most, well, in terms of facial hair anyway, <laughs> the star of the Red Green Show, Mr. Red Green! for mentioning my beard there, Harold. I, I take it that was just a jealousy on your part? No, 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 no. <laughs> the beard's your thing. I don't want any part of it. This is my thing. <laughs> well, I think that makes us even. Anyway, we had a bit of excitement up at the lodge this week. Uh, Moose Thompson decided he wanted to go water skiing. The only problem being, we don't really have a boat powerful enough to get Moose up. <laughs> Either does the Navy. <laughs> Moose is bigger than an ox. Well, physically, yes. Mentally, it's too close to call. <laughs> so Moose figured he got to find another way to go water skiing. So he decided he'd go out and find a lake with a hill in it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Excuse me, but I, I don't think you're going to find a lake with a hill in it. There's no such thing. <laughs> well, what's a waterfall, Harold? <laughs> So Moose went uh, water skiing <laughs> over Rocky Reef Falls. Oh, that's an excellent choice. Rocky Reef Falls, excellent choice. Because people say, you know, that where the water falls into that pond, they say it's bottomless, so. Yeah, well, according to Moose, those reports are exaggerated. Uh, in fact, uh, the collision uh, almost made Moose bottomless. But uh, when he regained consciousness in the recovery room, he saw some of that uh, surgical tubing uh, hanging on the wall there, and, uh, and that gave him an idea. Two ideas in one day? That doesn't sound like moose to me. <laughs> well, I blame the concussion. So what he did was uh, he managed to steal about 100 feet of that uh, tubing, and he hid it in his belly button. <laughs> he told them he was an Audi. <laughs> It's a beautiful morning of a beautiful day. There's dew in the meadow while others do on the hay. Good morning to the sparrow. Good morning to the dove. Good morning to the men as we sit down for supper. Oh, for gosh sakes, I slept in. This week on a Handyman Corner, we're going to show you how you can use uh, one type of transportation to uh, transport another type of transportation uh, without actually transposing the one trans... <laughs> All right, what I'm talking about here is uh, moving your boat, you know, like a trailer type of thing. But, of course, you don't necessarily need to uh, lead a trailer because uh, the easiest way to, to lead a boat to water is just to, to throw the pig into your van. <laughs> All right, you might want to check that the van's empty first. Uh, <laughs> might have your camping equipment in there, or, or in this case, a chandelier that I promised my wife I'd take back to the store. Okay, uh, boat trailers. Now, boat trailers come in all sizes. You might have a real small boat trailer, or you might have a real big uh, boat trailer. This one here, we could just uh, fill this up with water and, and go canoeing uh, right in the trailer itself. But maybe uh, maybe uh, some of you don't have uh, 2000 bucks to spend on a trailer. So what I suggest is you get one of them uh, trailer spare tires, and then you just uh, cruise the highways uh, looking for an abandoned trailer with a flat. You not only get a trailer out of that, you get yourself usually a half-decent boat and motor, and once you, once you file off the serial numbers, you can have yourself a nice summer. <laughs> uh, but for those of you who don't enjoy prison food, we're going to show you how you can make your own uh, boat trailer to transport uh, the form of transportation, uh, you know, and using another. But, but for that, you're going to need another form of transportation. Get yourself a couple of uh, old bikes. I, I got these here from the police auction. Uh, the cops stole them from Harold. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, uh, don't, don't use good bikes. Okay, now, uh, this here is your uh, galvanized steel piping. You're going to need that for the framework for your boat trailer. And... Uh, I got a bunch of joints here. I got uh, I got T joints and I got uh, I got the L joints and I got X joints and I got Q joints and got pretty well the whole alphabet here. But but, but just the consonants, not the vowels. Don't, don't I mean uh, like an O joint is of no use to you at all. And of course a beer joint that's a different story. Okay, now what you're going to need is a hacksaw to uh, cut the galvanized piping. 
Um, well, you need a hacksaw. I use power tools. <laughs> And now my favorite part of the show, the part where we expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say, I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point is my Uncle Red and his best friend in the whole wide world. Today is Mr. Glenn Braxton. <laughs> Dear expert, for years, for years we have been told that the communists wanted to control the whole world, but it turned out they couldn't even control Bulgaria. Why did the entire communist system collapse, and could the same thing happen to capitalism? I don't know. I think the uh, reason the communist system collapsed was one word. Recreational vehicles. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen a Rusky RV? <laughs> you ever seen Karl Marx driving around a motorhome? <laughs> oh, no. No, it wasn't him. And why not? You see, remember May Day? You see, always on the news. They got those guys up there waving as all the missiles go by and all the tanks go by, but not one RV. <laughs> you know why? Because they didn't want people to roam around the Soviet Union. No, they didn't want to give them their four tons of freedom. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. You got the KGB, you got the USSR, you got RV. <laughs> Communism fell at the knees of the RV. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Braxton, for that interesting insight into global politics. Do you show me a society that doesn't have RVs, Harold, and I'll show you a society that's politically and morally and spiritually corrupt. <laughs> the Winnebago domino theory. It is winter. The snow on the mountain reminds me of Uncle Larry. Uncle Larry was not educated, but he knew the woods. Coniferous, he would say, what the heck does coniferous mean? Or ecology, he would say, what the heck does ecology mean? I remember that last time we were hiking on the snowy mountain, and Uncle Larry said his last words to me. Avalanche, he said to me, what the heck does Ava? <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, you might want to measure the width of the canoe first to make sure that... Make sure that's wide enough. Ah, we got lucky there. Okay, now what you want to do is uh, check the uh, the cut end of the pipe to uh, see if there's any uh, you know metal spurs or slippers or whatever have you. Yeah, yeah, she's loaded with them. <laughs> All right, now uh, we take a few of these L joints and T joints and what have you, and uh, we have to connect them to the bike so that we can then connect the rods across to the bikes and make our framework. So we'll take uh, one of these T joints uh, here and uh, just stick that down uh, right on the handlebar. I don't know, how's that gonna, how's that gonna hook on there if it's so solid? Maybe one of these. <laughs> well, uh, I think what we'll have to use here is the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> And there you have it, and you just saved yourself a thousand bucks. <laughs> and you know, when you're not using it as a boat trailer, you can use it as a bicycle built for two. And it's actually better than the real bicycle built for two, because on them, uh, the guy in the back is kind of a scary view. <laughs> okay, so uh, our trailer's ready for our load, so let's get our load put it on the trailer. Up the bottom. Up she goes. Okay, let's put her on here. A little bit of duct tape. That's the duct tape. <laughs> she goes. Okay. Now we just uh, take our tongue and, uh, well, not our tongue, the tongue of the trailer, and uh, <laughs> hook around to the hitch here. Okay, and then uh, another little piece of duct tape. Safety first. <laughs> and uh, there you have it. So uh, until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. I'm going boating.
<laughs> it went in the hole. I sank it in the hole. I put it in the hole. Anybody? I put the ball in the hole. <laughs> bah, bah, right in the hole. Bah, bah, bah. No, 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 <laughs> oh, a joke. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good joke. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know. Especially the, the part about the ball in the groundhog hole. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. I'm serious about that part. No, Red, no. It's either all a joke or it's all serious. That's the way it works. Oh. And since the ball in the cup was a joke, well, I'm going to have to take a free drop. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Uh, Buster said you wanted to see me about something, Bob. Oh, yeah, that's right, Red. Uh, I hear that Moose has uh, made a slingshot out of surgical tubing. Yeah, yeah. And he's planning to water ski with it by slingshotting himself across the lake. Well, I didn't know that, but it certainly fits his personality profile. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Another joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Red, doesn't it seem like a, a trivial use of a high-tech piece of medical equipment to you? Slingshot water skiing? Come on. Well, I'm surprisingly unconcerned about it, Bob. <laughs> Maybe you should be concerned about it, Red. I mean, it could be environmentally hazardous. Uh, people flying headfirst into trees and denting them. <laughs> you may have to confiscate that hose from Moose. And, uh, <laughs> Could you imagine how far that baby could fire a golf ball? Could put me on the pro tour. <laughs> well, moose tops and slingshot water skiing unit was a bit of a bust. <laughs> Uncle Red, what happened to you? <laughs> Nothing good, Harold. <laughs> you tried the slingshot water ski thing yet? Well, I wanted to, you know, it's just, but every time I got up to the front of the line, Moose kept slingshooting me to the back, you know. <laughs> Once was funny, but after six times, I give up, you know. Well, the problem is, they got the thing working real great, but, you know, when, once men get something working, they're immediately bored with it. <laughs> so they wanted to try something called a double shooter. So instead of one guy, Junior and Moose both hopped up into the sling there, and then all the other guys got together and pulled the tubing back, and they pulled it so hard that the trees that it was tied to ripped right out of the ground, shot past them. <laughs> this slingshot wasn't made by Acme Company by any chance, was it? <laughs> no, why? Just asking. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> anyway, it's not very often you see a birch tree in its entire root system doing 900 miles an hour, <laughs> even up here. <laughs> And when the trees zip past the guys, it actually lifted them right off their feet. So we had a whole ball of kind of plant and animal life hurtling towards the two holder, which I was coming out of. Woo, holy! <laughs> and while it, they yelled to warn me, but they were traveling faster than the speed of sound, so I didn't actually hear them until four minutes after they hit me. <laughs> which really wasn't all that helpful. Well, I guess that's the end of the slingshot thing. And the outhouse, too. <laughs> No, 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 everybody wants to try the double shot thing. I mean, these guys never heard of live and learn. No, around here it's monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> I think I just spotted one. <laughs> uh, there's a big, big sitting in the parking lot. An 18 wheeler, which is usually nine on each side. The driver squeezes his big fat tattoo belly in behind the wheel. And you can hear the roar of the diesel squeal. He drops her into one of 32 years. Oh, for God's sakes, he stalled it. <laughs> Every week we do something for the young people, and unfortunately, this week is no exception. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Harold Green, and uh, welcome all you young viewers to... Posturing for popularity! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay, all right, uh, all right. I found the, 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 the secret to impressing the opposite sex. <laughs> I'm gonna share it with you. Okay, you know what it is? The secret to impressing the opposite sex is look sharp. <laughs> it's true, all right? So next time you're out in front of the cafeteria, you know, waiting for all the tough guys to leave, use your time wisely to impress the babes. Okay, don't just stand there. Stand cool. Watch and learn, my friends. <laughs> Let them think that you're an athlete. <laughs> you're friendly but jocular. <laughs> you're mysterious. <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> He's introverted, isn't he? <laughs> oh my, who's the sexy dude? <laughs> I bet you that guy is a thinker. <laughs> really wish uh, Bill gave us a little more warning, you know, when he's coming over. <laughs> Two or three years. Of... Yeah, thank you, Bill. <laughs> don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. I'll take care of the hat. <laughs> Time now for Ventures with Bill. Starring Bill. Ow. <laughs> now, the, the idea here was, uh, oh, wow. God. This may not last too long. All right, going to stay. The idea being, we're trying to rake up the leaves. It's that time of year, all the leaves fall down the forest and so on, and I was trying to, but Bill says, no, no, there's a better way. He's got a, he stole that duct tape right off my workbench, I'll betcha. <laughs> so Bill's always, the trouble with Bill is, well, I was gonna say he's always thinking, but he's not always thinking. He's always doing stuff and then thinking later. But the idea here was he thought if he uh, taped a couple of those rakes to his belt loops, and we got them, they're on there real secure. Then he holds the one rake in each hand. He's really, he can do the work of four people all at the one time, just running around. And I guess there's, but he went over the bike and it caught there and then the belt, boy, that duct tape really hangs in, doesn't it? You can use a bit of duct tape on some of those. And then he got a, and he got one of these leaf blowers, which, you know, belt, 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 belt. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the trouble is when you, a lot of times when you rent equipment, you don't, you don't get the instructions with it. I'm not sure Bill was completely sure of what he was doing there. Anyway, this is a, now this one was, I found this very intriguing. He had a, one of them plastic uh, garbage cans. And he says, the important thing here is you gotta seal this down, get it completely airtight, get that lid on there right properly. And then he takes a huge thing out of his pants. Scared most of us. Fires <laughs> that through the lid of the garbage can. Now the idea is uh, apparently that pickaxe makes a makes a hole. Oh, okay. uh, makes a hole exactly the same size as the hose. So uh, what he wanted me to do was to take the end of the hose, stick it in the hole, and that's like an airtight seal in there. And then he's going to get the other end of the hose. And uh, I thought he was going to blow into this, but no, he's going to suck on it. He's going to suck all the air out of the garbage. But I think the problem here was with it being plastic and so on. Uh, Basically, all he did was, was collapse the can at this point, so that really wasn't a much of use, so <laughs> rethink this, you know? You gotta, this is be. Oops. This was plan A. Oh, 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 oh. Now, plan B was he wanted me to get a metal, the metal uh, garbage can. This was heavy, boy, I'm telling you, it didn't look that heavy, but it got, no, 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 no. He tried to pick these up and buy them. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh well. I don't stay in that cabin anymore. There's a peephole in there now. Now he sucks all the air out. But the trouble was, uh, he threw up a lot of stuff. And, you know, we, you know, hindsight's a great thing. I think we should have emptied it out. A lot of old rotten leaves. And I'm actually not quite sure what that was. We haven't had a pony at the lodge for years. Anyway, uh, we got that out of there and uh, get the lid on there. And now he's got it airtight. Yeah, it's working. And you can see it just starting. Compresses a little, but not too much. The idea being here, what you're trying to do is create a vacuum inside the can. There we go, and I keep my thumb over, so I got that, we got that contained. And when he takes the top off, it's just like opening the doors in Star Trek or something. You get that. It's like a complete vacuum. I think the same thing's under Bill's tooth. Anyway, he's got all the leaves in there, and he's as happy as heck, but uh, I just didn't get to hurt him as much as I'd wanted to. Uh, Here's Ranger Gore to tell us all what he does when he spots a forest fire. Sure, yeah, well, the first thing I'll do is I'll uh, determine the exact location using my compass and my binoc... Oh, boy. <laughs> well, usually I can just use my compass. Um, I hope those don't rust out in the rain like this. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> I'll determine the exact... Whoa! That lightning strike was close. <laughs> Mr. Green, I'll, I'll determine the exact location using my compass, and then I'll call it into headquarters. Robinson Crusoe to My Man Friday. Robinson Crusoe to My Man Friday. It's my uh, code name. <laughs> Report for December 29th. Not December, Gord. Uh, weather, severe thunderstorms. Fire danger, low. Bowels, regular. I have my uh, best friend, Mr. Red Green here, who would like to say hello. Stand by. You say, oh, I'll, I'll get the headphones so you can hear them. All right. Wow, that stupid surgical tubing water skiing slingshot thing has been declared off limits forever. From now on, the water skiers up here can just use those huge overpowered boats like normal people do. What happened, Uncle Red? The guys run out of birch trees to rip out of the ground? No, they got bored again, Harold, with the double shot thing, so they all climbed into the sling there, went for what they called a gang shoot. <laughs> Snicky Peterson uh, hooked his dump truck up to it and started driving down the driveway to tighten it. Oh. He got way like, almost down to the road there, and he had her so tight, and all of a sudden she started to fray and rupture and rip and sprawling. <laughs> you ever been flicked with a wet towel, Harold? <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> My mom can be so immature. I'll try multiplying that by 500. <laughs> Woo! <Whoa. laughs> what a bunch of losers. <laughs> Sore losers. <laughs> it was the snap herd around the world. Some of the guys have welts you could fry an egg on. No real damage done, but uh, I don't think they'll be wearing wool pants for a few weeks. <laughs> All right, we gotta go to the meeting now, Uncle Rick. Yeah, uh, you go ahead, Harold. I'll, I'll be right down. Well, that's about it. So if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I would appreciate it that you don't say anything when I take my clothes off tonight. Just kind of limit yourself to the usual subdued laughter as you run to kill the lights. <laughs> and uh, to everybody else, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang out here at Possible Lunch, thanks so much for watching, and uh, keep your stick on the ice.